Chairman Pryor, Ranking Member Wicker, and members of the subcommittee, thank you for inviting me to testify today. My name is Jody Griffin, and I'm a senior staff attorney at Public Knowledge, an organization that advocates for the public's access to knowledge and open communications platforms. The phone network transition presents tremendous potential advantages for our nation, but we need to make sure these transitions result in a meaningful step forward for every person who depends on the network. Americans trust the protections of the phone network. We conduct our business and personal communications assuming that the phone network will just work, because it always has. During emergencies, we can call for help from police, firefighters, and hospitals. In the rare instance that any part of this system breaks down, local, state, and federal authorities intervene as if our lives depend on it, because they do. In January, in a unanimous bipartisan vote, the Federal Communications Commission recognized that our phone network policies must serve certain basic enduring values, public safety and national security, universal access, competition, and consumer protection. Our policies in the network transition must serve all of these values. This hearing focuses on public safety and reliability, but a conversation about these values will always entail the rest of the network compact. After all, when you need to make an emergency call, what you really need is a reliable network to make that call. A person can't call 911 if she doesn't have phone service in the first place, and if she lives in a rural area, she may waste precious time trying to get connected. New technologies have great promise, but they don't always meet the critical needs for a reliable telecommunications network. We all have already seen reports of wireless carriers providing insufficient location data to public safety answering points, or in the event of a power outage, fiber-based services will require battery backup, unlike traditional self-powered copper lines, and wireless services will be useless if the cell towers also lose power. Public safety services and reliability are so firmly ingrained in our network now, many consumers may simply assume new technologies will give them the same guarantees they have in the existing network. If, for example, a customer doesn't realize his fiber-based service needs battery backup until the power has already gone out, he can't prepare for a prolonged outage. It is critical to ensure the FCC has the authority it needs to preserve the network compact and serve its fundamental values. In light of the recent net neutrality ruling from the D.C. Circuit, policymakers must make sure the FCC can implement rules to require carriers to complete calls and provide basic service even after the network has moved to IP or wireless or fiber infrastructure. To be clear, no one is suggesting we should hold back on technology. The question is how to make this technology work for all of the 300 million people who rely on our network every day. The underlying technology may be changing, but the essential services and consumers' expectations for them remain the same, and our national policies must reflect that fact. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you.